Time now <laughs> for our rants and raves, starting with Dan, I think. Uh, I have a rant for the FCC, uh, which has been issuing all kinds of decisions to shift regulations from the consumer to corporations. Uh, my specific rant this week is for... Uh, their ending of the cross-ownership rule that prohibits TV stations from buying daily newspapers uh, in the same market. The theory is that the newspaper business is suffering, the TV news business isn't what it used to be. Let's let them combine forces and maybe come up with a more robust product. What you're going to end up with is less diversity in terms of coverage of the news and service to the community. It's a terrible decision. You're also going to end up with some Sinclair-owned newspapers, right? Yeah. The Probably. They continue their rise. Almost certainly. Which is a con conservative outlet, in case anybody doesn't yeah. know. Adam. I want to rave for Twitter, which I haven't done a lot lately, but Twitter <laughs> has changed its standards for verification, that little blue check you get, which originally was taken as, okay, this person is who they say they are. It sort of became reinterpreted as this person has the sanction of Twitter to be getting their message out. Twitter has unverified uh, based on new standards that prohibit things like racist speech, has unverified Richard Spencer, who, as we all know, has gotten a ton of uh, coverage in recent months, the white supremacist trying to make white supremacy respectable, and a couple other people who view the world the way that he does. They, of course, immediately cried foul, saying they were being censored, saying there was no room for conservatives on Twitter. Uh, again, I would say there's plenty of room for conservatives on Twitter. The company has decided, as a privately held company, that there's not room for racists. I think it's terrific they've done it. They still have a, a whole bunch of other messes to clean up, but I think this is a good start. Hmm. I mean, how do they know? How do they know how to, who to unverify? Or how does Twitter yeah. know how to unverify? Well, someone like Spencer, I mean, if someone yeah. uh, or, or an organizer of the uh, Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, if someone, if someone has a lot of followers, and if someone is out there in public getting coverage for making statements about how white people are yeah, superior okay. to non-whites, so that's a pretty good judgment. way to start. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly. Um, I'm excited to report that Radhika Jones is now, who is the former editorial director of the New York Times Books Department, former editor-in-chief of Time Magazine, is going to take over as top that's editor great. of Vanity Fair. I mean, this is a real change because she's following Graydon Carter, who's been there quite some time, 25 years or more, and he followed Tina Brown, if people are trying to remember, right. <laughs> who, who was in that lineup. And um, she's very brainy. Um, People are saying, well, does she have the same kind of Hollywood connection as Graydon? She says she has some ideas that she's not sharing about how she wants to put her own stamp on it. But uh, South Asian woman, smart as a whip, going into a, a culturally significant publication, even if uh, magazines are struggling. I, it'll be interesting to see what she does. It'll be great if she does underpaid compared to Graydon. Oh, is that uh, true? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. What a shock. Make, he was making $3 million a year. She's going to get 500000 Do we know what yes. he made at the start? Well, that's the thing. I mean, mm -hmm. if she is seen as being a big success, I hope they bring that compensation. I up. hope, by the they way, won't. she doesn't have the, the Hollywood connections that he had or the yeah. Kennedy right. fetish that he yeah. had. Because no, I would doesn't. read these great pieces in yeah. Vanity Fair, and what kept me from subscribing was this sort of Hollywood porn they put yeah. out. Week. I just I didn't even <laughs> want to be seen exactly. bringing it into my home. Yeah. So let's hope she does. Well, well, she's about the Kennedy yeah. Yeah. Well, she's also yeah. Dan. recruiting okay. some new writers. So that should be interesting. <laughs> let's go with Dan Lothian here. Okay. Uh, this is a rave for Fox News. Oh. Uh, it, this ties into two things we were talking about, sexual harassment and, and everything going on at Fox. Gene Simmons, the rocker from KISS, was on a book tour. He was oh, on yeah. a couple of their shows. Uh, that was fine in his conversation there. But afterwards, he was walking around in the newsroom, and he, did, he said some de you know, demeaning thing to women. Uh, took his shirt he, off. He took his shirt off. Oh, my God. Uh, he took his book and hit some of them over the head. And based on the sound, you could judge how smart they were. What? Uh, so <laughs> after he left, some of the people who worked there complained to HR and other uh, officials, and they banned him from Fox for, for life. life. And given put his picture the, at the doorway. Yeah, put, exactly. His picture is there. If you see him coming, do not let him in. Uh, you know, given the current climate, I think uh, no one's going to sit around and let something like this go, especially when employees start complaining. Oh and so it's a race. I didn't realize he was such a phenomenon at the, at the network anyway, that he's on all these shows. I did not know that at all. He is it, on the business show as well. He comes yeah. on and talks. What? Yeah, he he's apparently got a conservative is, thing going he, on. Exactly. He, wow. he speaks often on that show, but now he's been banned for life. I think. Yeah. Taking his shirt off he would took be sufficient reason to ban him for a while. Yeah, <laughs> no, right. I wouldn't even do that. No. Uh, I've got a uh, rave tonight for the Boston Globe and its new feature, uh, The Fine Print by Sean Murphy. He's, he's done some great little stories, one that he uh, 
came up with, I think, in late September, had to do with an 85-year-old yeah. woman. Yep. The elevator yes. broke. Yeah, she was doing was 56 stairs every time she had to go in and out of the place. Well, as a result of, of that article, it got sent to the Warren Buffett Foundation. You know, and they yeah. give away the money for various mm. good causes, and they are putting her up in a hotel until we get the elevator fixed. It's a uh. condo building, so it's one of those things where everybody has to chip in and come mm. up with the money. But uh, Sean oh, Murphy wow. has any number of really interesting little gems, often on the front page. And as Brian McGorry said uh, back a couple months ago in the reconfiguration, you know, we need to be relellessly interesting and come up with a, a, you know, stories that are fun to read. Unless they think they're starting for sort of reframing consumer exactly. reporting. It's yeah. like back to the yeah. old. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's really